The Recluse by Frederick Chambliss Weems. In the little American town of Strandman, along the seaweed-strewn coast, a trio strolled. In such places one is wont to spot these three, although not these three in particular necessarily. The one in the straw hat holds a starfish in which he tries to interest the other two. One of these, the woman, takes a picture of the first man, the starfish displayed in the palm of his right hand. As he flings the captive into the waves, he causes it to brush the eye of the second man of this band, who rubs his eye in irritation before smiling. This is a trio known on any one of the beaches near Strandman. In fact, one of the trio this day had just snapped a picture. I'm going to use that as evidence, said the man rubbing his eye. Does it really hurt, said the woman with the camera. No, but it's as if there's a splinter in my eyelid. Well, don't rub it, said the man who'd thrown the starfish. Does it sting, said the woman. The man who'd had the starfish thrown at his eye stopped rubbing. It'll itch after I go to bed, and I'll rub it raw at two in the morning. Tie your hands down before you go to sleep, said the flinger of the starfish. The man with the stinging eye was staring. What, said the woman? What, said the fish flinger? They turned their heads. What are you staring at? Yeah, what are you staring at? The man with the now puffy eyelid said, staring, That's it. The other man looked at the woman. That's what? Davy Handerley's house. What? What? Let's go. The girl who answered the door was about sixteen. Ointment, she called, turning her head. Someone has a big puffy eye. What? she said. What? Excuse me. She closed the door, leaving the three on the stoop. Do you think that's him she's talking to? He's probably not here. The door opened. Here, you can have this, said the girl. She held out a tube of petroleum jelly. The woman took it. The door shut again. Wait, wait, said the man with the eye. Let's go, said the other man. Yeah, let's go, said the woman, handing him the tube so quickly she almost hit his bad eye with it. They descended the dune to the beach. Putting the ointment on, the puffy-lidded man said, They'd have let us in if I didn't look like this. As pretexts go, said the other man, needing ointment is better than having a flat tire. At least it was true, said the woman. Do you think she believed me, said the man with whose eyelid needed ointment? Not only did she believe you, whoever it was she was calling to believed you. Well, if they believed me, couldn't we go back and say, thanks for the ointment? We were noticing a resemblance between you and the famous writer Dave E. Handerly. You can't tell a woman she looks like her father. That's like telling a boy he has his mother's personality. This is not a woman, it's a teenager. Maybe it's his girlfriend. Well then, he deserves to be stalked. Let's go. They climbed back up the dune. While waiting on the stoop after ringing the bell, the man with the ointment on his eyelid asked, Is it pronounced recluse or recluse? Shh, shh. The door opened. It was the girl. Thanks for the ointment, said the man. Keep it, said the girl. She started shutting the door. Um, I didn't just want to return it. Um, we couldn't help noticing. Aren't you your father's son? The girl stared through the narrowing doorway. Daughter, said the man with the medicated eye. Why are you here? We just wanted to say how much we like your father's books. Book, said the girl. She shut the door. The trio started back down. What a tough cookie that girl is, telling us to book. They heard a sound behind them of a window opening. It was the girl sticking her head out the window. One book, plus a collection. She disappeared from the window and opened the door. Do you like peanut butter sandwiches? asked the girl. The trio were on a couch and a chair in a living room with a shag carpet. No thanks, said the woman. The two men said yes. The girl went away, saying, There's no jelly. Do you think he's here? whispered the woman. I don't know, said the man who'd thrown the starfish at the other man. Let's look at his bookshelves. He got up and went up to a bookshelf behind the TV. He turned his head sideways so as to read the bindings. He's got story of all. See if he has Lionel Trilling. Lionel Trilling hated him. He has Catch-22. Whoop-de-doo. He has The Letters of Lord Talleyrand. God. He's got Vonnegut. Oh. No Lionel Trilling. What did Lionel Trilling write? He's got Something Happened. Is that Lionel Trilling? No. Joseph Heller. Didn't Heller write Catch-22? Of course. This guy's tastes are limited. 
Well, I imagine he knows Joseph Heller wrote Something Happened and Good as Goal, and he turned his head even more sideways. We bond in New Haven. Christ, what are we doing here? At that instant, the girl reappeared, bearing a brown plastic tray. She offered the two men little square sandwiches on pumpernickel. She gave them napkins. Putting the tray on top of the TV, she sat down on a wooden rocking chair. So, you like Daddy's book? Well, said the woman, it's so famous. We all read it in tenth grade, said the man with the ointment on the eyelid. I read it between sixth and seventh grade on my own, said the other man. Are the sandwiches dry, said the girl. Well, I know there was no jelly, said the man with the ointment. You need water, said the girl. She got up quickly. The rocking chair almost fell forward. A parakeet in a cage in a room through which they'd passed twittered. They heard a cupboard being opened, running water and ice crackling. The phone rang. They heard the girl say, Hello? Hi. Nothing. Mm-hmm. 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 No. Nothing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No one. Just some people. Mm-hmm. Bye. She came back smiling. I got you some water, she said. Hey, said the man with the two good eyes, taking a glass. Did your father know Kurt Vonnegut? I don't know. Oh. Well, do you know if he ever met him? I don't know. The man with the puffy eye said, Well, I'm sure he's met lots of writers. Oh, I'm sure, said the girl. The woman said, Has he introduced you to any? I don't know. But he's introduced you to people, hasn't he? Well, yeah, Mike Legrand. The two men looked at the woman, and the woman looked at them. Isn't he a ghost? The girl's face changed. Mike Legrand is dead? No, no, he's a ghost writer. He writes ghost books? No, we're just surprised your father is friends with a ghost writer. Well, Mike wrote his book for him. He's supposed to know him. Young Peter was ghost-written? All three members of the trio exclaimed. Young Peter, said the girl. The parakeet chirped. So, said the man who'd thrown the starfish at his friend's eye, her father is not Davy Handerly, author of Young Peter and Ten Tales Told, but David Edward Handelman, serial killer and credited author of I Have to Live With It and editor of Seven Killers Speak. Not so loud. She can't hear us up there. They were at the bottom of the dune now, having downed their glasses of water and swallowed their pride and told the young girl her father's story was interesting. They'd fled as quickly as possible. The two men had got out the door first, followed by the woman, whose last words to the girl were, We really appreciate the ointment. It was dark as they walked toward the boardwalk. So he's in prison, right? said the woman. The man with the injured eye said, It's the best place to write, isn't it? He doesn't write. Mike Legrand writes. Come on, let's get back to the car in case he's escaped. The three began running along the beach. They took their shoes off, holding them by the heels as they ran. Wait, wait, let me put my shoes on, said the woman after they'd raced up the boardwalk steps. I don't want to get splinters. Gasping, the trio leaned against the rail and put their shoes back on. They began running. I love that sound, said the starfish thrower as the soles of their shoes slapped the wooden walkway. The lamps were little moons. As they reached the car, the woman took her keys out of her bandana. She unlocked her door. Panting, she started the car and said to the two men, who were also panting, It's funny that a serial killer has such a good library, though. She put on the headlights, which were seen from a window at the top of the dunes. Ha ha! They're on their way, Daddy! A man in a bathrobe emerged from a room off the kitchen. He had some paper in his hand. I thought I was going to have to call you again, he said. I can't keep them all away, said the girl. You know, I was tempted to come out and show them this. He handed her the piece of paper. The girl looked at it and read the first line aloud. Perhaps a recluse might pop his head out to say a few words about a friend. Oh, Daddy, the girl said, this would have meant so much to Kurt. Do you think so, daughter dear? The distant headlights vanished behind a condominium, leaving only a view of a, of a lamp-lit night.